chapter 12. John chapter 12, from verse 1 to verse 13. Important lessons from Palm Sunday. Awe, kokwa taki, nino Palm Sunday. For uh, John chapter 12, we are going to read from verse 1 to verse 13. We all will rise up to read together. John 12, 1 to 13. Hallelujah. Let's be on our feet. Please, can we have that scripture on screen? Uh, those of you doing the work over there, God bless you. Thank you for your good work. The Lord will reward you marvelously in the name of Jesus. Can we read together after the count of three? We are reading 13 verses. One, two, and three. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. This is a good summary. If you're an English student, this is a good summary. Everything, every information is, uh, 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 is uh, summarized in one verse. Let's go verse 2. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Verse 3. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Verse 4. For then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Verse number 5. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Hmm. Verse 6, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let I alone against the day of my burying had she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. Verse 9. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. Verse 10. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Let's kill Lazarus as well. Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Verse 12. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, what did they now do in verse 13? That's what we are doing today. Took branches of palm trees and went, that, went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Now be seated, please. Leave verse 13 for me. Now look at what gave birth to what we now call Palm Sunday. The Bible says from verse 12 that the people took note. That, ah, Jesus is coming, oh, he's coming towards Jerusalem. How, what can we do to honor the coming of Jesus? Ah, Jesumbo, umbo ni Jerusalem. Kilale, shilati bu yikun. Fe, ah, Jesumbo. The Bible says they, all of them, you know, uh, in those days, palm tree is very tall. But you know now, um, science have made palm trees of various sizes. I have two in my house, you know. Uh, I'm waiting. It has it'll remain one year, uh, six months, for it to begin to produce coconuts. And I'm still taller than it. Hallelujah. You know, I wanted to bring the, the leaves, but there was no time. So what am I saying? They now decided to climb Look at that level of height to bring down palm leaves, you know, palm branches. They said, and they were laying it on the floor. Now, that's what we call today red carpet. You know, that's what we call red carpet today. Now, they were trying to give Jesus a kind of honorable entry into Jerusalem. Now, that was what they were trying to do. We want to give Jesus what we call honorable entry into Jerusalem. Now, 
And today, I want us to pick the lessons. What, is, what are the lessons to pick from Palm Sunday? Now, if you look at from where we read, you will discover that there are two categories of people in that particular place that honored Jesus. Now, Palm Sunday, the summary of Palm Sunday is that Jesus received what we call a honorable entry where? Into Jerusalem. Honorable entry. So, Palm Sunday is all about honoring Jesus. Honoring Jesus. Now, and what do we celebrate every Palm Sunday? We celebrate the honor that Jesus received. Now, he received what we call a red carpet entry into Jerusalem. Now, that's today's language. But in those days, we call it a palm tree carpet entry into Jerusalem. And everybody started shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. Why was he honored? That's what we want to look at this morning. I'll be using it to teach you the gateway to a lifestyle of honor. Now, there is nobody that does not want honor. What can you do in order to gain honor? That's what I want us to see. Now, I told you that in that particular meeting that was organized for Jesus, hear me, a lot of people gathered in order to celebrate him. The Bible says they put up a supper in honor of Jesus for one person. Because he was able to raise Lazarus from the dead. A man who was dead, already buried. A man whom everybody have lost hope on. Nobody expected any good thing again. They had buried Lazarus. They had cried. They were, in fact, already four days into his burial. What is your memory? They know bury I. They are still mourning. So it was the morning stage that Jesus Christ came and called him back to life. And the Bible says in that chapter 12 from verse 1, they decided, let us put up a honor party for Jesus. Let's put up a honor party. Ah, ah, ah. He picked Lazarus from the dead and made him a living soul. You know, and they were eating. Everybody was drinking. As they were eating and drinking, a woman now came forward again. Another woman said, ah, it's not only Lazarus that Jesus did something for. My own name is Mary. You know what? I used to be a prostitute. And in fact, I was somebody that had some demons in me. He cast me out. He cast the demons out of me. The Bible says she brought out a very expensive perfume. You know, and she, as she, just like this, she brought it out and poured it on Jesus. And the Bible says when Judas uh -uh, saw the perfume, you know, there are some people like that. They can perceive a perf, you know, and tell you the price. That was the kind of person Judas was. Ah, this perfume, I know it. I can perceive the smell. This perf, if you sell it, the salary of one, one year is not even up to buying it. Just like when we went to dedicate uh, a shop and somebody was saying, I don't know if you have my husband's perf. And she looked at the shop. She said, ah, I said, ah, we can get it for you. He said, no, you don't have it. He said, my husband's perf is 35,000. I said, we don't have it. Because as at that time, the whole goods inside the shop was not even up to the money of the husband's perf. So perf to one wa. So this woman poured it on Jesus. Now, that's the second reason why they were celebrating that. Me too, I have a testimony. So pouring this perf on him does not cost me anything. They were it was that celebration that attracted two kinds of crowd. Number one, people that came to Jesus because they, saw, they, they had the testimony of Lazarus. So they came to see Lazarus. As they were coming, they were getting saved. As they were coming, they, and the second crowd of people were those who wanted Lazarus to die. That if we kill him, people will have no proof that he actually does wonders. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it was that crowd that came to the dinner, that now followed Jesus as he was going to Jerusalem. And the news started going about. Jesus, that rose Lazarus from the dead, is coming to Jerusalem. And people say, ah, What can we do to honor this man that is not an ordinary person? The Bible says they started climbing palm trees, and they started cutting it down and putting it on the floor. And Jesus was coming, and he himself was glad. And people started calling him, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Now, what am I teaching you this morning? We are going to the teachings. You know what God told me? Listen, if you are going to live a, you know, if you are going to enter the realm of honor, you must live a life of impact. 
Now, no one, hear me, that, li- that does not live a life of impact can actually enter into the realm of honor. Any Tiofi, we are here. Ah, ah, Sherry, if one win you, you know, thank you, Nicola. Because if you look at what happened on Palm Sunday, both God and men honored Jesus. Why did they honor him? They honored him because of the impact he had made in the life of people. That's why if you are here, if you are not touching anybody's life, forget it. God cannot honor you. If you are here, you are not touching anybody's life, forget it. Man cannot honor you. That honor of Palm Sunday came because Jesus touched lives. Lazarus was a proof of him touching lives. This morning, I have come to teach you as a child of God that one of the purposes for your existence is for the sake of impact. A lot of people gather to celebrate and welcome Jesus our Lord. Hear me? Because of the testimony of Lazarus, the man he raised from the grave, the man he gave life back to, Jesus was not celebrated because he was the son of God. Jesus was not celebrated because he was the son of God. He was celebrated because of the lives of those he changed and touched for God. That's the gateway to celebration. Any child of God that is not touching lives of men for God will never enter into honor. I wrote it down this way. In life, we will be celebrated because of the impact we bring to people's lives. We will be celebrated because of the impact we bring into people's lives. We will be celebrated because of the impact. Understand clearly that life does not consist on the abundance of the things you own. You know what life should consist on? The level of people's lives you have touched positively. Now, who are those that can lift up their voice to say, ah, thank God for you? It is not how much you have. Oh, pastor, you don't understand. I have, do you know what I have? I, in, my, in my passport, I have about visas of 20 countries. That is not what life is about. Pastor, you don't understand. I have, I have, I have about 50 houses. That is not what life is all about. You can't take any of those things out of this world. Pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. Oh, I have so so and so number of cars. That's not what life is all about. Life is all about touching the lives of others. Until you begin to touch the lives of others, hear me, God cannot honor you. How do I know this? Please quickly give me this scripture. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. While they are bringing that scripture, there are many ways you can touch people's lives. I will, I will tell you when we get to that point. Now, look at Luke chapter 12 verse 15. The Bible says, And he said unto them, Take it and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Show me message Bible. Don't be covetous. It's not the number of clothes that is important. Ah, Pastor, hey, see, they would rope me. It's not the number of clothes. It's the number of lives. In your world, don't do any to it here. On top of it, Palm Sunday, to it, we are one of your courage. One courage, one of your courage. Ah, kill a little bit. She left it. Jesus. Jesus. Tokpa de Lazaru ni koku to the sodi alai. Jesus tokpa de Maria ni koku eh eniti angwe ni ah ah awo awo ni shebi na ah ah shewo ya olo show ya for this language ni yao. Eh daddy she no lumwa. Hello. Oh the sodi eniti omo lo nule lo. It is people that touch people's lives that God honors. Now show us the message Bible. Look at this. Life does not consist on... He said, message Bible, not NIV. Message Bible. Thank you. Speaking to the people, he went on. Take care. Protect yourself against the least bit of greed. Life is not defined by what you have. Even when you have a lot, life is not defined by what you have. It's not defined by what you have. 
No one will get, eh, ah, ah, eh, do you understand? Me will write anything, me will write your long girl, me will write anybody, ah, and it's a care account, me shall my grow. Life is not defined by what you have. Life is defined by what? The am le- amount of lives you touched. Brother Femi, Baba Beji, you are welcome online. He said, yes, so that's your husband. So back to what we are saying. This morning I want to show you. There's a question I wrote down that I want to answer. Pastor, how can I make impact in our present day? How can I make impact in our present day? I will answer with three. I will give three answers and we close. How can I make impact? Pastor, how can I make impact in our present day? Listen, if you pay attention to the, document, to the documented event that we just read, you will discover that there are two types of people that enjoyed impacts from him, from Jesus. You will see Lazarus and you will see Mary. And listen, look up. You will discover that out of the two of them, in fact, the both of them, there is none that Jesus gave money to. The need of Lazarus was not money. He needed life. The need of Mary was not money. She needed what? Salvation. How can you make impact in today's world? Because when we are talking about helping people, making impacts, what so many of you are thinking is, Pastor, I don't have money. How can I do it if I don't have money? It don't start with money. How do you start? To make impact, number one, you must first discover what you have and how you can use what you have for the purpose of God and for the blessing of humanity. That's the first thing. What do I have? These are the th- things. Now, I, there's this particular guy. If you go towards a, a Liberty Road junction, you will see him. What he has is wisdom to solve, to solve traffic problems. He's not in the military. He's not in the paramilitary. In fact, he's not a tra- traffic warden. He's just an ordinary boy. This boy will stand at the junction of Liberty Road. In fact, I have given him 500 naira before. There was a day I was on the bike. And I was talking to him about this bike. Man, that Nigeria, our, our state, or some people have also called this guy and encouraged him. Ah, the man said, Pastor, if you know how much this guy makes here, people give him money seriously. You know what this guy will do? That place used to be a place of for hold up. But this guy will wake up in the morning and stand at that junction. Now, and he will be directing traffic. Those that must wait, he will tell them, wait. He will tell them, wait. Those that we, and you see that, he keep, that everybody is now going on their own. In fact, one day, I was so happy. I just had to wind down and gave him 500 naira. He collected the money, put it in his pocket and told me, go, 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 go. He didn't want me to waste his time. That's what he had. What do you have? Can I tell you the truth? There is nobody that doesn't have anything. A sign that you don't want to be of help to anybody is that mindset that makes you to believe that you don't have anything. Because see, Touch lives. If you don't touch lives, hear me, you cannot have access to honor. Over 2,000 years ago. The, ah, look at, why, was, why did they organize the dinner? They organized the dinner in honor of him raising Lazarus from the dead. And it was at the dinner that Mary had to share her testimony. It's not only Lazarus that has testimony. Me too, I have. I bought expensive perfume. I will put it to him. And when the news started going, he said, I'm going to Jerusalem. People now started hearing, Jesus is coming. Je- Please, can I ask you, who are those thanking God for your life? Do you think everything is money, money? Me, myself, and I. Kosha Lugo, Kosha Jeo, Kosha Ra, Omomoto, Kora Leko Kone. Is who and who are you touching? If you don't touch lives, you are not qualified for honor. I didn't even know that I'm going to preach in this direction. It was yesterday that it was done on me that today is Palm Sunday. 
had prepared messages for the marriage program. But in the course of the week, do you know that as I listened to, I listened to a lot of fathers, I was listening to one great father in the, in the faith, that Bishop David Oedeko, and he was saying that there are, there are times I, I just bash into people. He said, I bash into this young lady and said, Ma, Papa, Papa, ah, thank God for your life. So I said, yes, thank God for my life. I said, he said, sir, you paid my fee throughout university. Bishop Oedeko said, I don't know you. He said, sir, you met me when we're building the cathedral. I was carrying uh, 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 sand on my head during the building, and you met me. You said, Why are you not in school, young lady? And I told you that sir, I had to defer my admission because my parents didn't have money. He said, No, don't defer your admission. What are you studying? He said, Law. He said, You wrote a note and told me to take it to Covenant University uh, uh, admission office, and you wrote on that note, her tuition throughout settled by me. He said, I don't know her name. She saw me and said, Papa, you have forgotten me. He said, there was another day too. I was working again at, at the camp. You know, I got to one office and I saw one body, somebody in the office. And the person greeted me. He said, because I don't know our staffs. The person greeted me. And as I was going, he said, Papa, I just want to thank you. He said, he asked, thank me for what? He said, you paid my tuition all through the school. And I got a job here. Whose lives are you touching? If you don't touch life and you are thinking that everything about life is just for me to eat, for my family to be okay, then you are not going to enter into the level of honor that God has for you. And I'm showing you how to touch life. How do you touch life? Look at the first thing. To make impact, you must first discover what you have and what, sorry, and how you can use it to serve the purpose of God and humanity. Hear me. Everything is not money. Joseph did not give Pharaoh money. He gave him wisdom. Abi, show what did Joseph from Pharaoh? No. Ha ha. What do I do about this dream? What is the meaning of this dream? What is the meaning of this? And Joseph says, Sir, this is what I see. These dreams of the cow, ten cows, swallow up the fat cows. I see it as seven years. And I see the fat cows as a season of abundance. For seven years, abundance. That will be swallowed by seven years of famine. And, and Pharaoh said, wow, this is wisdom. This is wisdom. Who can manage this economy but you? Okay, come and try. They did it. He didn't give them money. You have something. Tell your neighbor you have something. I didn't hear you. Now, let me share this small testimony with you. So that you will know that some of the things needed to change people's life is not that expensive. I was coming out of church sometimes last week. I was just coming out of church. And I saw one of her sisters. She's in the sanctuary department. I was just coming out of church. And I saw her coming down, was offloading uh, uh, sweet potatoes. And I greeted her. Ah, sister, how are you? She said, fine, sir. God bless you. How is life? Is, ah, what are you doing with this? She said, sir, I fry this for a living. I said, wow. He said, and with these potatoes, I, I, you know what I do, sir? I pay my children's school fees. I've changed my house, papa. In fact, I have even done a postry chair of 250,000 era. I said, from frying potatoes? He said, yes, sir. He said, the only thing that is needed for me now, I want to buy yam, to add yam to it, because people are asking for fried yam, but I cannot afford to remove it from the potato money. I said, how much is fried, the yam you want? How much yam do you want? He said, yam of 2,500 is what I want to buy. And when you tell me, what, 2,500? I gave her 5,000. She knelt down there on the road and was crying. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? He said, sir, you don't understand what you have done. She was crying like, you are embarrassing me. 2005, Longwa. Look at that woman too we established to be selling granites. She stood in front of the church. I don't know her from Adam. She was crying like using the main road to curse herself if she's lying. Tom Bank Paro. Ah, touch me. I give her five thousand. five thousand. Hello, ma, see you alone. Ah, ma, join church. Ma, join church. You want to keep moving five thousand? Go back to your church. 
What is required to touch people's life is not what you think. There is nobody that doesn't have something. Is it because I have more than enough? No. A minute she is shaking it. I'm still trusting God. So what Joseph used to touch the life of Pharaoh and the entire Egypt was not money. It was what? Wisdom. What Daniel gave to uh, 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 his master, Nebuchadnezzar, was not money. He gave what we call profitable service. Honest and profitable service. I won't steal from my master. I will serve him honestly. And I will make sure my master makes profit. That was what he gave to Nebuchadnezzar. That was what he gave to King Belshazzar. That was what he gave to King Cyrus. Other people said, ah, let's steal. They couldn't steal. They said, with Daniel, with Daniel, that was what he had. You have something. I went to Nepal office to, set, to rectify something and they were delaying me. Where I stood, a long, woman just ran out and started screaming, this is the pastor. This is the pastor. And I was, I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. What happened? He said, she started screaming. Everybody was looking towards my direction. This is the pastor that saved my life. I now remember that day I was going home. We finished service. I didn't go with her. I was striking and I had people crying. What happened? I entered the house. You know what she had? She had jaundice. Her old eyes was clearly, eyeball was yellow. But they didn't have money. I look at their table, different kind of concussions. Ntoshe yalaide, agbo kini kanto mure, iba toshe yasaidi, inle ilo mu, iba toshe la baba mulika, nto mure, wangwa kori shiri shi agbo jo. Mwa ni ejwe ma binu, ntoshe o arabele yoti shemiri, to ba kweju o maku, I ran home, carried my car, and carried that to Ibadan Central. The doctor said, sir, who is going to be responsible for the bill? I said, I will. I deposited their first payment, 11000 They gave her treatment. After one week, she was okay. I didn't know her from anywhere. They sent me the bill. I cleared the bill for them. And that was the last time we saw. Only for me to see her after... For several years in Nepal office, she was working as a security officer. Touch lives. Let me tell your neighbor, touch lives. Those things you have that you are saving. Listen, the greatest kind of security savings is not money in the bank. It is investment in the things of God and investment in people. That is the kind of investment that brings Great dividend. Yeah. You know what the book of Proverbs says? He says, if you close your ears, when people cry for F, he says, when you cry, nobody will hear you. Ah, there's no time. On. See, I hear. Can we go on? Hallelujah. So, let's take number two. There's no time, there's no time, there's no time. Number two. Number two. Now, what's number one again? Don't forget. To make impact, you must first discover what you have, and how you can use it to serve the purpose of God and humanity. Number two, see life as being beyond I have enough for myself. See life as being beyond I have enough for myself. Begin to understand how important it is to be a vessel in the hands of God to reach others. The second one is change your mentality. See life beyond I have more, I have what I, more than what I have. I, ha I have this. Just this morning, I and my wife, before we came out of home, somebody has approached us. This was somebody we have helped for four years, leaving our house. Because people poisoned his mind. He left us for about one year. Now he's married. He came back again. Oh God, oh God, forgive me. Oh God, forgive me. Oh God, forgive me. I didn't know what I happened. Well, I did. I said, okay, I can't take you back, but I will get you a job. I spoke to some people I knew. They put him in, in, in Suma. They put the wife. I got a job for the wife in a saloon. Got a small apartment for them. And they were happy. Ah, Pastor, thank you. Mama, thank you. So this morning again, they now came back. Oh God, oh God, I want to return to this to you. 
I'm I, my wife now said, ah, look at life. Look at life. So they can return to us. So they can return. So life is beyond I have enough to eat. I ride a good car. I have cars that I want. In fact, I'm not hungry. Life is beyond that. If you have all those things and you don't touch life, you are poor. Begin to change your mentality. See life as being beyond I have enough for myself. Begin to understand how important it is to be a vessel in God's hands to reach others. Show me 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. You will see that these four leopards, their mentality was right. They had enough to eat. They had enough to save. But they started thinking, could they die? Ula wan jenwi. Ula wan mui. Ula tunli ni kwa mo. Kude sun jeni ispreli yo. Che iman ro. Look at this. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. There's no time, there's no time. And when these leopards came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate, can you see, and drank. And carried from it silver and gold and clothings. No, kilo two walaye, ti won ti ni. They had enough to eat and drink. They had clothes. In fact, to, to make it greater, they see as silver and gold. Silver and gold is higher than dollars. At least dollar and pounds, they are the highest uh, currency. Silver and gold is higher. They had all these things. Let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. They are supposed to relax. And they went and hid them. They had savings. And they came back and entered another tent and carried some there also. And went and hid them extra savings. Now extra savings is what we call a, a fixed deposit. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. You have more than enough. You are not thinking of others. You are not doing right. This is my wife now. Ask her. At times the way we talk at home. Our members that are yet to have children. We have children of our own. But we are thinking for them. She will ask me, Oni, what can we do? For those still trusting God for children. Oni, what can we do? To those, for those still trusting God for job. Oni, what can we do? That's how we think. And that's why you see God keep blessing us. We are not doing well. Let's go on, let's go on, let's go on. I don't have time. This day is a day of good news. And we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. So now therefore come. Let us go and tell the king's household. Can you see? So that every other person will benefit. You know, I used to be proud to say it. Told the glory of God, I am happy. All my family members will trace their greatness in one way or the other to Pastor Prince Will. When the firstborn of the country was to travel out of the country, ticket was a, was a problem. Her visa remained two or three days to, to expire. There was no, no money for ticket. No money for ticket. If we gather all my family members together and what we had, it won't pay our ticket fee. So I went to speak to somebody and the person said, there's no problem, Pastor. There's no problem, Pastor. I will speak to my traveling agency and I will make sure that the ticket is bought in her name. So they bought the ticket. That was how she traveled. Now, she traveled. The next thing she said, okay, okay, now I've traveled. Our younger brother should come. Where my younger brother was to travel to, God used me. Now, and it was on and on and on till everybody traveled. Who can thank God for your life? Life does not consist on the abundance of the things we want. We own. I've eaten. I'm okay. Look at that Yoruba proverb. Oni olo wokan. Lani. Ino otoshi. Kilo no. Otoshi ni. I was telling my children yesterday. When my mentor's son. On his wedding day. Says something. And I told my children. I said. When that young man said it. I love him more. He said, my daddy used to teach us that the purpose for life is one. To know Christ and to reveal Christ to others. 
And I told my children, that should be your vision. Don't rise and let others remain small. The purpose of Easter Sunday, I mean Palm Sunday, Jesus was honored for the impact he made. And I've shown you the second ways by which you can make impact. Let's take the last one because of time. Then we'll prepare for the second service. Number three. Third way to make impact. Third thing to do to make impact. Do not allow the attitude of the nine discourage. Oh, sorry. Do not allow the attitude of the nine discourage you. Pay attention to the testimony of the one. The nine will always discourage you. It takes only one to encourage you. The multitude will always discourage you. How do I know it? Luke chapter 17, 12 to 19. Put it on screen. The Bible says Jesus met ten leopards. And one death and met one. And he said to them, do you wish to be clean? They said, yes, sir. Go show yourself to the priest. The Bible says as they were going. Now, then they said one to another, we are not, oh, that's not where I, you, as they were going, they were cleansed. Now, out of ten that were cleansed, the Bible says one came back. Sherry, Lara and Kotiki, Jackie or Koloko, Wale Mashore, Nipe, Amangu, and Moti or Padawa. At the Yens of Winto Bashi, Refin or Mewa, Rishu and Luan B, and a Koloma Pada, Messon, Ne Pada. Only a Yaka, a Yajoka, a Yajoka, or show me, show me scripture. We don't have time. I have just eight minutes more. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him then who were leopards, who stood afar off, yes, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Yes. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. Yes. Now look at Jesus, verse 16. And fell down on his face, at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were they not ten clings, but where are the nine? Look up. The nine will never return. That's where so many of you get discouraged. Because of the nine. The majority are not thankful. It takes only few to know the effect of what you have done. Even in the church that I pastor, I always tell young ministers, if I want to look at the attitude of the members, I'll be discouraged. But do you know it is only few people that will always come around. Ah, sir, thank God for your life, sir. Thank you for your teaching, sir. Sir, we just want to use this token to appreciate you. I thought I was the only one until my mentor shared the testimony of their church too. Then he shared the testimony of Pastor E. Adeboye too. That all the financial responsibility of Redeemed Christian Church of God sits only on four people. And Redeem is the largest Pentecostal church in the world. So the majority will not return. Why are you allowing the voice of the nine to discourage you? There are people we've given money to in church. People will have paid their house rent that they didn't even return to church. That in fact, when there is any misunderstanding in church, they used to be at the center of it. And one of my mamas, okay, Pastor Prince Willow Shiwo. Pastor Prince Willow Shiwo. Charlie, so you will We've paid up to 70,000 naira. As rent for people. One person. I've counted 48,000 naira. Oh, yeah, take. Go and pay your house rent. But they don't return. If you look at the nine, the nine, I call them the nine. That's why, don't forget my last point. Do not allow the attitude of the nine discourage you. Instead, pay attention to the testimony of the one. The one. The one that returns. One. 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 Out of how many? Ten. So out of hundred, expect ninety not to return. 
out of 1,000, expect 900 not to return. But Jesus wasn't discouraged. If you read through that verse, after praying for that leprous man, receiving that man's thanksgiving, he went to heal another man again. Don't forget, you can never enter into honor until you touch lives. That's why I'm teaching you how to touch lives. I thought I'm the only one. I listened to Bishop T.D. Jakes last two weeks ago. Bishop T.D. Jakes said he got to a point in his life, he made up his mind he was going to close his ministry. He said because he saw the, ma the majority of statements written on newspaper backsliding bishop. Bishop of Babylon. Newspaper pay topic. And these are Christians writing these articles. So he said he was making up, he made up his mind I'm going to go to church on Sunday and announce to the members that I'm done with church. He said but on Saturday where he sat down discouraged at the park he saw a woman said are you Bishop Jakes? He said yes I am. He said thank God for your life. I was about committing suicide so, so and so years ago. I didn't know that my TV was on because I was depressed. I tied the ropes. I wanted to put my neck and your message, you just, it was time for you to preach. And you preached a very powerful message and my life was revived. And I decided that death is not the option. Bishop, thank you for your calling. If not that God called you, someone like me will have been dead. He said, he looked at himself. He said, as that woman left, it was not too long. Another person came. Are you Bishop Jakes? You look like the man I see on TV. He said, yes, I am. He said, my business broke down. I was bankrupt. I thought of death. But at that point, you came up, message, and the hair of something grew again. And he told us in that message, he said in that message, there's going to be a time that the Philistines will shave your hair. But don't be discouraged. Your hair will grow again. He said, I was revived. He said, sir, you are the reason why I went back into business and now I am a multi-millionaire in dollars. He said, he stood up. I'm not dying. I won't die. It's not yet time to die. If you listen to the voice of the majority, you'll be discouraged. Because the majority will never support you. If you are nice, they will say you are trying to use their destiny. I almost lost my life too. You know where I wanted to lose my life? I wanted to stop giving. Thank God for one pastor that God sent to me. He said he was praying. You remember that pastor? He called me on phone. Pastor Prince Will. Pastor Prince Will, where are you? I said I'm in church. He said, God said, I should tell you. Don't stop giving. Don't be discouraged. He said, that giving is the gateway to your greatness. God said, just this, no, 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 no. God said, I should tell you. Hey. And I got discouraged because I was in the mix of a, a fellowship of ministers. Anytime we, and we usually have dinner program. Dinner program. Because they thought dinner, we, are, we gather ministers in the bottom. So, and anytime we had that meeting, they will say, okay, we want to we'll cook rice. How do we get the rice to cook? We're about 50. We'll now be looking for half bag of rice. 50 ministers. That's 15 Congo. Somebody here, 25 cups. But no, so I will now come out and say, you know what? I will give the rice. When I say I will give the rice, how about the ground to a Urunko? I'll say, okay, don't worry, I'll give the nuts oil. And the, what I was giving, I didn't have. You know what, like I told you, always discover what you have. I had a neighbor that sells them that believes in my credibility. He believes in my credit card. She's a Muslim and an imam's wife. So anytime I go to her, I need a bag of rice. Me. Need the Elaji 
she will give me. Pastor, I will take it by faith. I will go and give them. You know what those pastors will now start saying? Hey, the key pastor will be on the job. He's using our destiny. They said they in a place and my mother my biological mother had it and you know mommy Benson of blessed memory ah she stood up almost scattered the fellowship and told them if you don't go and beg my son I will take this thing and it is sin with it but me I didn't know so the fellowship now sent three ministers to come and apologize to me so they now came to my office. They sat down and they were talking, uh, Pastor, uh, we did something. I said, I don't know what you did. One of them now took the courage to come up and said, uh, we've been saying, the pastors have been saying you are using charm. That's why uh, anytime you bring rice, uh, we, you know, you have been using charm. Uh, they, they were of recent, you got the new car. I said, car. If you know how that car came, you won't say, I never asked them, if I'm using charm, you will have to climb sock away. If you are coming to church, you don't know whether you will die or you will live. Because that sock away can collapse. So we used to pray that members will not sink. You got to the point, we went to do bridge on that sock away. You climb back to come to church. Now, on the altar of the church, the altar is half sock away, half cement. Then at the entrance of the other side to soccer, if the three of them should flush, it's trouble. That if I'm using charm, without be, will I stay there? But the third minister that followed them is a senior minister. Some of his members left his church and joined our church. That one now said, Ati Ben, Kema Binu, Shubantu Bayake Lo, Tole, you know, Shogun. Eloja Wambe. So because of that, I decided. Anywhere I find myself, if they are raising even 10 naira, I will not raise my hand. I will not give to them. That was why God went to speak to that pastor. Tell him that he's about to hinder his own glory. I cried. But I thank God, I went back to myself. Stop listening to the nine. That it is one person saying it does not mean it is authentic. Or it is not authentic. That it's a group of people saying it does not mean it's true. Because I know you will like to quote that scripture that says, uh, if two or shall say concerning anything. Sometimes two or three can mean nine did not return. Are you learning? I wrote here as I'm closing. Stop allowing the negativity of others discourage you. Always remember that discouragers are in the majority. Are you hearing me? Always remember that discouragers are where they are in the majority. Encouragers are in the minority. One king Paul. As I rest my case. Read Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. If you refuse to give up, hear me, and you continue to touch lives, you know what the reward is? The reward is Palm Sunday. What is Palm Sunday? A day that Jesus honored. The reward is that you too will enter into multiple honor. Look at it now. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season, we will reap if we do not lose heart. Rise on your feet and begin to thank the Lord for what you have had. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have had. Today is Palm Sunday. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have had. Lord, I thank you. Lord.